Regarding planning training for runners, here are some key things to consider. You got to consider the runner's training background. Were they an athlete before? How many years have they been running? Have they been running mostly continuously throughout the year? Or is this just seasonal where they run 10 weeks on the team and then take several weeks off before they commence another sport or several weeks before they return to the same sport in the season that follows the next, next year? All that matters. Do they have a history of injuries? You've got to consider this if you're a coach. The kid who has a chronic issue with a plantar fascia at the bottom of their foot it's not going to be able to handle the workouts as often or nearly as intense or with as little recovery. You've got to keep this in mind when you're assigning workouts. And what is their fitness level? Here's one of my big pet peeves. Assigning interval volume based on total mileage run per week. Totally nonsensical. I'll tell you why. There have been many, many athletes that I've come across that are not even very fast that are running 100 miles a week. I've had kids that have contacted me, said, I'm running 17 minutes and 30 seconds for 5K and I've moved all the way up to 100 miles a week. So according to XYZ formula I see in a book, I should be able to handle six miles of intervals. No, you cannot run six miles of intervals. I don't care if you run 100 miles a week, I say. Your body can't absorb that much. A world-class runner who's running 100 miles a week? Yeah, they can do six miles of intervals. Here's the significant difference between the world-class runner and the average Joe high school runner. Aerobic capacity. The world-class runner takes in 80 milliliters of oxygen for each kilogram of body weight, which is 2.2 pounds, for each minute. Okay? If you were to figure that out in absolute terms, they're consuming about five liters of pure oxygen each minute out of about 175 liters of air that they moved in and out of their lungs each minute. Imagine this, a two liter bottle of pop. Okay, you're familiar with that, I'm sure. These guys are consuming more than 80 of those in air per minute. More than 82 liters of, of air, that's huge. That's why they're world class. The average high school kid probably can maybe do 120 Okay, significantly less amount of air. And the total amount of oxygen they consume might be three or three and a half liters of pure oxygen for each minute. And their VO2 max might be significantly less, might be 45, maybe 50 milliliters of oxygen per kilogram per minute. In other words, a world-class runner has so much greater aerobic capacity, he or she can recover very fast from high intensity intervals. Consequently, he or she can run far more total volume in an interval workout and it doesn't negatively affect them. In two days they can come back and do the same workout when they do six times one mile for example. The high school kid who has a VO2 max of a little over half of a world class person cannot recover that fast. Not in the workout, not in the subsequent hours and days, absolutely no way. So six miles of intervals assigned to a kid who's a 17 minute 30 runner with a modest aerobic capacity is insane. Don't base interval workouts on total mileage run per week. Base it on their fitness level. How do you determine how much training stress the athlete can absorb? Well, I mentioned one method. Here's another. You need to allow at least two, if not three, weeks to recover, uh, absorb workouts. The body is not a machine. It just takes time for remodeling of muscle fibers, cardiac tissue, changes in blood volume, and so on. Mostly it takes about three weeks to change muscle fiber characteristics. So you shouldn't really increase the training load for that athlete more often than every three weeks, maybe two weeks if they're really fit and have a long history of uninterrupted training.